been difficult, and for some of us, it's been devastating. And some of you that may be streaming on tonight have lost loved ones, have lost co-workers, have lost neighbors and friends during this pandemic. Some of you have lost your jobs, and some of you had to deal with family and financial issues and, and dynamics within the context of your family. Some of you have had uh, unbelievable realities that have emerged and have blindsided and shifted the whole trajectory of, of your lives. I stand before you very clear in my heart and in my mind and in my soul and in my spirit that the enemy of our souls, uh, he has come with relentless fury and fierce evilness. I stand before you tonight, uh, one who is not fearful of a spiritual fight with the enemy, and I refuse to buckle under the reality of the relentless fury and fierceness of the devil. I am not afraid of the enemy. Let me say that again. I am not afraid of the enemy. For instance, let me say something political that I feel that I need to say. My opinion, my feelings. You may not feel the same, but I need to get this off my chest. You may not agree with what I'm going to say tonight, tonight, but we all have the freedom to speak. And in these days, I'm like Reverend Martin Luther King. It doesn't really matter to me now. We are, as I have stated before, a very social conscious church. We are a church who is steep in dealing with the social issues of racism and the word and phrase we hear now, systemic racism and sexism and injustices. What we are facing now since the injustice and the senseless killing of George Floyd, and we see it every day with, with people, how they are feeling and how they're reacting and how they're responding. Uh, and so many others throughout history have died senseless, senselessly. There is a sense, finally, as I said, that the systemic racism um, that is, 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 is in slavery is deeply woven in the fabric of America's democracy. And what is happening now is necessary and is long overdue. I like to say it's better late than never. Some of you streaming tonight may be members of other churches across the country, and I thank you for being with us this evening. The church cannot be silent. I give God praise for Pastor Granger and how he ties in history and the Bible, because the church cannot be silent from the pulpit and tiptoe around the racial issues at hand. It is a not enough to dissect the word of God and not make uh, one uh, the concrete relevancy uh, to help the people of God to make sense of what is happening in our history and on today as we preach and teach the word of God. Therefore, I cannot come before you teaching in the Psalm series and say nothing about what we are faced with daily. With that being said, November is election time, and I'm going to keep on saying it. And as I have said before, for me, I, I am sick and tired of the lies and the deceit and the incompetence and the evilness and the ignorance and the divisiveness and the racism and the code language to the KKK, the superior attitude, and the nastiness and the mean-spiritedness. Let me say it again, the lying and the, the twisting of the truth and the tweets. There is a, a, a niece that has written a book about the history of her family, the tragedy and the division. And she wrote, let me quote what she wrote in the book, lying was primarily a mode of self-aggrandizement meant to convince other people he was better than he actually was, end of quote. I'm just quoting the book. I want you to hear it before you read it. 
I don't wet, know where you might be tonight and what your political persuasion is. And honestly, it is between you and God. All that to say is this. And now Kanye West is running for the presidency? Really? This, again, is what Julius Caesar said, and that is if you can divide your enemy, then you can conquer. My sisters and my brothers, particularly young adults and young people that can vote now, do not let the enemy use you in November. Put a prayer on this political reality. All I am saying is please vote in November. So in today's 56, now I got that off my chest. Let us go into the word of God. Today's 56th book of Psalm. We find this book, or this chapter in what is considered from um, book number one to all of the books of Psalms. I always like to let you share with you something that you may not be aware of. Book of Psalms is divided into five books per se. Book one is Psalms 1 through 41. Book 2 is Psalms 42 through 72. Book 3 is Psalms 73 to 89. Book 4 is Psalms 90 to 106. And the fifth book of Psalms is considered book, uh, Psalms 107 to 150. We have taught over this Psalm series from book 1, book 2, and book 5. Before the psalm series is over, we would have taught out of all of what is considered the five books of psalms. For me, I have enjoyed us settling in various psalms, and my prayer is that something was said that spoke and ministered to your soul in this season of all of our lives. It has been my prayer, Ebenezer and Streaming Church family, that our young people and young adults would learn how to settle in the word of God and learn how to embrace and sit in scripture for themselves and let the word speak volumes to your soul and strengthen your soul for the long haul. Waiting and listening and meditating on scripture is a lost approach because everything in this technological age is fast and quick. On one hand, the fast and quick pace of life is wonderful. But when hell and fury comes down your street and the resolve does not come fast and quick, and you have to wait on the Lord, it can be difficult. Many people are having problems during the pandemic because they have had to be locked in and isolated. The unresolved issues, the, the hidden has come to light and the unwanted reality of what life is about these days is more than many people have been able to handle and process. The Psalms series prayerfully will encourage us all to sit in the scriptures that will be taught on tonight and to grab hold of a word to encourage our souls as we journey through life. Psalms uh, 56, Psalm 56, 1 through 13 is entitled in some Bibles, Fears in the Midst of Trials. Other title, another title in some Bibles may, may be trust in God under persecution. In others, this psalm is entitled, In God I Trust. It is agreed by biblical scholars that this psalm, this song, this psalm was written by King David when the Philistines took him to his enemies in Gath in 1 Samuel 27, 11. And I believe I went into great detail in the teaching in Psalms 34 uh, about King David being uh, uh, taken in as, as an enemy, or taken in by his enemies in Gath, and that was on May 20th uh, Psalm series. Now, we thank God for our, our technological team, and you are able to go on EbenezerAmy.org and go to the YouTube channel and review any of the sermons, preach any of the psalm series teachings at your leisure and at, it, at, at any time. 
Psalm uh, 56, 1 and 2 reads as follows. King James Version for me, I explained that last week. Uh, because oftentimes our ancestors, our grandparents, our great-grandparents, this is, they read the King James Version. So in their memory and in their, in their stick to it I, I pretty much stick with King James Version, but I will interject other uh, interpretations. Psalms 1 and 2. Be merciful, verse 1, unto me, O God, for, the man, for man would swallow me up he fighting daily oppresseth me. My enemies, verse number two, would daily swallow me up, for they be many that fight against me, O thou most high. This psalm is called a masco. And I might have mentioned this in some of the other psalms. I don't recall, but I might have. But a masco, I think I did, which means that this writing is imparting wisdom to the reader. King David in these uh, beginning verses, you can hear that he is deep uh, in distress and in his distress, he turns to his God. Sometimes in our distress, we might turn to temporary methods of numbing us to the difficulty of our realities of distress. But the truth is that when those temporary methods wear off, uh, nothing about our reality has changed. Like David in, in deep distress, and while we are in these distressful times, we too must consciously and deliberately turn to the Lord and call on him. David goes on to explain and express what his distress was like. He says, for man would swallow me up and is daily oppresseth me. He is saying that although they are men that oppresseth me, uh, for him they're like monsters. They will not only come after him, but they will destroy him, swallow him up, overtake him. NIV says, oh God, for men hotly pursue me. They're on his trail. David in this 56th chapter is saying that the men never stop coming after him and for him. The enemy refused to give him a break. The enemy is daily fighting King David. His enemy is successful in oppressing him and pressing him. The enemy of his soul and our souls, the devil, is always oppressing and pressing our souls. And when he does, like David, we need to cry out to the Lord in prayer. May we cry out to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to lead us not into temptation, but to deliver, deliver us from the evil one. The more violent the attack of Satan... Hear me now. The stronger our plea and our prayers should be for our deliverance. Now, if you not, have not ever had to fight with the monster or the monsters, the enemies in your life, when, when, then this psalm may not have any significance or bearing on your journey. But if you have, like I have, have had to ever fight the evil one, like me, for, for, for yourself or, or your family, then stay with me on tonight in this psalm series. Verse number two that was already read, David is dealing with and admitting in that in verse number two that the enemy of his soul and our souls can be relentless. The enemies of his soul and our souls are never content. The devil will keep on coming to try to kill, steal, and destroy. Did you hear me say try to? All of us. And he will do everything he can to turn us away from the Lord. Notice in the text, my sisters and my brothers, that David's enemies are plural. And in verse 20, uh, 2b, quote, he says this, he writes, for they be many that fight against me, end of quote. But we must know that although the enemies of our souls uh, have dispatched all of their imps on every side, 
We know as David knew that there is a defender of the faithful that is mightier, that is stronger, that is more powerful than all the enemies of our souls. The enemy will collaborate with those who are in his camp and do all he can to destroy the believer whose faith and trust is in the only one that can defeat him. But that can only happen, my sisters and my brothers, if we are willing to turn to the one who David turned to and acknowledge that our God, as King David write, writes, is most high. In other words, God will help us from a higher place. Won't you shout, higher place. The God we serve is above and more powerful than any enemy or enemies that may appear to be strong. In our weakness and oppressive state, David's saying that the God he served and the God we serve is higher, is greater than any strength that the enemy thinks that he has over us. However, we must be willing to acknowledge, recognize, and embrace who God is. He is most high. He is more powerful. He is the one who can overcome the oppressor when we call out his name and we pray. God is able to overcome the enemy and give us victory in all things. Verses 3 and 4. What time, verse number 3, what, what time I am afraid. NIV puts it this way, it's a little bit more clearer. When I am afraid. I will trust in thee. Verse number four. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I would have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do with me. Right here in all of his intelligence, King David's intelligence and his relationship with the Lord, he was not so heavenly minded that he was no earthly good to his reality. Well, you might be saying, Pastor Joanne, what, what do you mean? Uh, David, King David was anointed by God as a shepherd boy, but now in his despair in the city of Gath in captivity, he was willing to admit his fear while he had his faith in God. King David was willing to admit that he was faced with the possibility of not getting away. I talked about that before, and not being able to escape. His, his life was in danger. Sometimes we can be uh, in the spiritual clouds and not see and not sense and not admit that we are in danger. We are unwilling to what I call to be spiritually grounded. We are so convinced that we got it going on spiritually and we are so deep that we cannot be forthright and honest to admit that we are in trouble and that is our reality. No one can tell us anything. You're the only one who has an intimate relationship with God and you are the only one who hears God. When all the time it is the enemy that has you entangled in his plan for you, your life, and your future. Talking to someone tonight, I know I am because I feel it in my shanana. Now the psalmist David was in trouble. He knew that he was in danger. He was fearful, but his fear did not cancel out his faith. God can use our fear. Hear me now to drive us to a stronger faith and a deeper trust in the God of our salvation if we are willing to face our fears in the faith. I, I love the book by Brennan Manning entitled, I, I quote him all the time, Ruthless Trust. He says in his writings concerning verses three and four that the story of salvation history 
indicates that without exception, trust must be purified in the crucible of trial or in the severity of the trial or, or tribulation. Out of it emerges something new. He further writes that David, the most beloved figure in Jewish history, was no stranger to terror and loneliness and failure and even sinister plots to destroy him. Yet he ravished the heart of God with his unwavering trust. Oh, my God. When the evil one is trying to overtake our lives, whether we are faced with the fear of today or the days of tomorrow, may we put our trust in conquering faith in the Lord and really rely upon him and believe that we will come out of the clutches of the enemy, not poor and pitiful, but victorious. Our faith in verse number four will not bring despair or defeat, but it will bring forth praise. We must continue to praise him every chance we get. We must continue to thank him. We must continue to glorify him. It must be our desire to praise our God. It must be our reality. It must be in our DNA. We must keep on praising him even before the deliverance, even before the breakthrough, before the fulfillment of the promise and the victory over the enemy. In verses 1 and 2, David is complaining about his reality. But in verses 3 and 4, he expresses his confidence in the God of his salvation. May we settle our faith our trust and our confidence, not in man, not in temporary pleasure, but in the God of our salvation and not fear, but in faith and know that victory is ours in the name of Jesus the Christ. Verses five and six, verse five says, every day they rest my words. It's W-R-E-S-T, rest my words. NIV puts it this way so you get an understanding. It, it, it writes, all, it's written all day long. They twist my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. Verse number six, they gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps when they wait for my soul. David acknowledges that his enemies, as I said before, collaborated against him. Like in your workplace, where your enemies will collaborate against you because of your gifts and your talents. It can happen sometimes in the church house, where those uh, who are, uh, have issue against leadership or your visibility or your commitment or your consistent, uh, your enemies will collaborate, not at Ebenezer. This might be at some churches, but not at Ebenezer. Anyone streaming on tonight and your words have been twisted, you say one thing and your words have been twisted. I tonight can raise my hand as a woman preacher, as a co-pastor of Ebenezer, when I have said some things and the words have been twisted. For King David, it did not matter how they viewed him as a king, a psalmist, a man, a father, a warrior, or one that was suffering. It did not matter to his enemies who he was. They had thoughts and they had feelings and they undervalued him. And no matter what he did, he was not appreciated, he was not loved or valued. The enemies of David had collaborated and were after him. They desired to destroy him. And David was aware, keenly aware of them as they sought after him. David was willing to recognize in this psalm, Psalm 56, that there were those who were scheming and had malice in their hearts towards him. The Bible said they marked his steps. That's M-A-R-K-E-D, my Massachusetts accent. may not understand what I'm saying, but they marked his steps and they waited for his soul. Lord, have mercy. 
David is saying, I see them. I see my enemies. I see what they are trying to do. As a man or woman of God, you cannot let yourself be fooled by the evil one and your enemies. As a man or woman of God, my sisters and my brothers streaming tonight, spiritually you have, we have the upper hand over our enemies. As a man or woman of God, when you are in tune spiritually, you will be able to see and to sense the enemy. You will be able to know when danger, when evilness walks in the room. And as you are, or, or I uh, may sense the enemy and danger, David is saying, as the enemies collaborate, gather themselves against him. As they watch him take his steps, and as they wait for his soul to be destroyed, as a man of godly wisdom and guidance, he places his case, he places his situation before the Lord, and in doing so, he puts himself under the divine protection of the Almighty God. Psalm 91 says it this way. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. My sisters and my brothers, get under the divine protection of the Almighty God tonight. Verses 7, 8, and 9. Verse number seven, shall they escape by iniquity in the anger cast down the people of O oh God? And verse number eight, thou tellest my wanderings. NIV says, record my lament. Put thou my tears into the bottle. Are they not in thy book? Verse number nine, when I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back. And I love this part. Verse number nine, the end says, this I know God is for me. David is asking the question to the Lord, would those who have done wrong avoid being punished? They do wrong to good people at the expense of good men. Will there ever be an end to the games they play? to the tweets and the lying and the deception and the racist thoughts and cold language to create divisiveness. David is saying, in your anger, Lord, do something. Trip them up in their tricks. In other words, let their wrongdoing backfire on them. Are you with me this evening in this psalm series? Are you with me? David in his reality is saying, that in this 56th Psalm, what was honestly what he was feeling and what you and I may be feeling. Just as David did, the Lord is saying to all of us to be specific in our prayer life, effectual, fervent. Uh, when we petition unto the Lord, what we may need the Lord to do for us. He asked God what he wanted and needed for him to do for him and to his enemies. And then in verse number eight, David is wondering about all he has gone through and the steps that his enemies have taken to pursue him and try to destroy him. My sisters and my brothers, when trouble lasts a long time, Lord help us, when pandemics that did not have to happen this way last a long time, when unrest and unsettled pandemics uh, are ever present and then the things in our lives are unsettled and there is unrest. My sisters and my brother, sometimes, brothers, it's sometimes it feels like there's no resolve in sight and it, and it has been so long you can't even remember because of the length of the course of troubles in your life. I don't know about you, but even now during this pandemic, sometimes I can't even remember what day it is. The trial of our faith, the test of our faith, the tenacity of our faith has been in the balance. The trial of David's faith, the test of David's faith, 
the tenacity of David's faith had been in the balance. And he writes with the confession of his feelings and his crying and his weeping. He is indicating in the eighth verses that he has cried so much his tears could fill a bottle. And he has cried so much the bottle could hardly hold the amount of tears that David had cried. Like I said in the first teaching a number of months ago, I believe one of the reasons I love David and the Apostle Paul because they are strong, godly men who are not afraid to be in touch with their feelings. Meaning that whatever they struggled with or whatever they were dealing with, they have had no problem laying before the Lord and the reader how they were feeling. David is sharing that his floods of tears, Lord have mercy, are so many that he has cried so that even uh, all of his tears, he, 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 he still trusted, still believed that the Lord would be considerate of his tears. But the, the, the reality is that he cried and he was willing to admit it. Meaning that what he had gone through, the amount of lamenting, the amount of weeping, and the amount of tears he had cried, because of his situation and circumstance, because of his enemies that collaborated against him. He believed that because of his relationship with the Lord, the Lord would acknowledge, look upon his grief and his sadness, and be caring and concerned and considerate of all that he had gone through. Someone tonight that may be streaming has been crying, been crying concerning what they have been through, what you are dealing with and still going through in your life and, and what's going on in this nation. Someone tonight like myself has been weeping over the things that have happened over these last four months. Someone, to, someone like tonight like myself have had to navigate my way through some realities that uh, I did not see coming or you did not see coming and continue to seek the Lord through our weeping and through your weeping and through your tears and believing that the Lord has heard your prayers and your midnight cries. We must believe tonight that the tears that David cried and the tears that we all have cried move on the heart of God and he will come through for whatever has made us weep and cry over and over again. Verse number nine uh, our artillery, our weapon in all things is not only our faith and trust in the God of our salvation, but it is in our prayers. When we cry in sadness and despair from our hearts, we pray the Lord will answer. Scripture says, weeping may endure for night, but joy will come in the morning. The Lord will respond. The Lord will act and turn the enemy in our lives from us. The Lord can, in a moment, deliver us from our enemies and the evil one when we pray. He will come right on time. And when he does, the enemy must flee. Because when we cry, the Lord will respond to our cries. It touches his heart. We know that because the psalmist writes from his own journey what the Lord can do. The psalmist in the end of the ninth verse writes, This I know, for God is for me. It is David's certainty. It is David's infallible faith and trust. It is David's indisputable and relentless trust. Like Paul, who wrote in 830 Romans, the 8th chapter, the 31st verse. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Why would we not call on the Lord in prayer in the time of trouble? King David is saying, why, we, why would we not seek the Lord's help? For he is the one who can instantly break through 
and destroy our enemies and calm our fears. Why would we not call on the name of the Lord when all of hell is breaking loose all around us? My faith and your faith, my sisters and my brothers, my confidence and your confidence must be in the God of our salvation. He is the only one that I know that has the power to destroy the enemies of our souls. In closing, verses 10, 11, 12, and 13. Verse number 10 reads this, In God will I praise his word, and the Lord will I praise his word. Verse number 11, In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Verse number 12, Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee. Verse number 13, for thou has delivered my soul from death. Wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? David now shifts from sharing his fears, his faith, his trust, his tears, and his confidence to him thinking and praising God in the last verses. In every situation, in every reality, we cannot stop praising our Lord, our Savior. David alludes to it earlier, but he now sits in his praise. Lord, have mercy. The Lord is to be praised because of who he is, his attributes and his acts of his loving kindness and tender mercy towards us. When the praises go up, the blessing comes down. David has gotten the help he needed, and he is so grateful. Anyone streaming tonight can acknowledge that when you needed help from the Lord, he came through for you. The Lord has blessed, and the least we can do is thank him and praise him. In the midst of it all, we still can thank him and praise him. David is saying in verse number 10, our hearts must be connected to the sureness of God's word and his promise to us. We must praise the Lord for his word and his faithfulness that he has shown us day by day. For the Lord is the word incarnated. He promised to never leave us alone. He promised that he is our shepherd and we shall not want. He promised that he is a healer and by his stripes we are healed. He promised that he is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all we could ever ask or think according to his power that worketh within us. Praise is what we do all the times. Verse number 11, we put our trust in God. No matter what, faith cancels our fear. Faith tells fear that we cannot stay here. Fear, as I said earlier, can drive us to faith, but once faith is in control, fear must flee. David now steps in a faith place that he is no longer afraid of his enemies. His trust is in the God of his salvation. And whatever they were threatening to do to him, he no longer is fearful. And he decrees in first number 11, I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. In his praise, he is now secure in the Lord. In our praise, we are assured that the Lord is with us. We, when we accept Christ, when we would dedicate our faith unto the Lord in verse number 12, we have made a vow to him, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. And when trouble comes, oh, it will come. We must praise him, and when trouble leaves, we must continue to praise him and thank him for bringing us through on the other side of trouble. We must remember that it was the Lord who was on our side. Talked about it last week, left side, right side, front of us, back of us, when we were in trouble. And it was him that has kept us throughout these months of pandemics and problems and troubles. When we get on the other side, may we not forget who has kept us in the palm of his hands and sustained us and made ways for us. Like David, may we acknowledge, as he acknowledged in the last verse, that it was the Lord that delivered his soul 
And it's been the Lord that's delivered our souls from death. His enemies and our enemies shall be defeated in their attempts upon our lives. After COVID-19 pandemic, after the unrest and, an unnecess and the necessary protest pandemic, after the Lord brings us out on the other side, whenever it is, first let us keep on praising him. And may we, like David, after we are delivered, continue to devote our lives to the God of our salvation, the one and only true and living God that has been our keeper, and his name is Jesus, the one who suffered, bled, and died on the cross, but on the third day got up with all power, the one that kept David's feet from falling, and like David gave God praise for his favor and seek him day and night. May we be walking in his righteousness, praising him and blessing his holy name, because like David, the Lord took him from the jaws of his enemies to the presence and the light of the Lord in his life. This is the same God that has and will continue to take us from the darkness of the enemy into his marvelous and glorious light. In the time of trouble, he will continue to hide us in his pavilion and he will continue to be a keeper of our souls. For those of us who know him, who love him, who serve him. My sisters and my brothers, yes, there is trouble in the land. Every day there is something going on that is troubling. But I just believe that if we would put our faith and trust in the God of our salvation, he will take care of us and bring us through. We must believe that God's word is true. He promised to never leave us and to never leave us alone. So you and I must trust him. We must depend upon him. We must keep on praising him and take him at his word and stand boldly upon his word. The Lord did not create us to worry or fear, but he created us to worship and to praise him daily. This is the Psalms series.